Hear the words of the Collect for the first Sunday in Epiphany. O Lord, we beseech Thee mercifully to receive the prayers of Thy people who call upon Thee, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill the same. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in Thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. On Friday, the church marked the Epiphany, or Christ's revelation to the Gentiles. It is on this day that the church recognizes the coming of the wise men to Bethlehem to worship the new king. It is an open question as to actually how many wise men there were. Tradition speaks of three wise men, but we only know that from the number of presents that were given, the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh, and not actually how many people were actually there. Uh, in many Orthodox traditions, this is the day when they actually celebrate the birth of Christ, and they give gifts in exchange in reminiscence of those gifts which the wise men first gave to Jesus. We also recognize that on this day that Christ was revealed to those who were not Jews and that he accepted their worship and this is a foreshadowing of the opening which the Christian faith is to have to any who would recognize the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yet what does the faith in this new king mean for our lives? And we find the answer to that question in the Collect for today, and it's prayer. We find first that it is the wise men that worship Christ, and therefore we must too. In turn, it means that people who follow Jesus Christ should pray to him that they both may perceive and know what things they ought to do. It is when those prayers are answered that we find that we then have the grace and the power faithfully to fulfill the same. Which may lead us to the question then, what is it that we're supposed to do? And we find this answer in the epistle for today. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And it is, of course, in trying to live up to that brief description of what it means to be a Christian and a follower of Christ that presents us with the problems that we face in our lives and our obedience to Him. In my own life, I have found that knowing what to do or what not to do is really not the problem. I know very well what it is that I'm supposed to do. I also know very, very well what it is I'm not supposed to do. See, knowing is not the problem. The problem is, and what I lack sometimes, oftentimes, is the will to do what God calls me to do. I would add that in many cases, my desire to, to actually do the will of God has not slacked. It continues unabated. And this is why I can understand what St. Paul wrote in the next verse, which is Romans 12.3. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. I may indeed think that I am a good Christian. I may indeed think that I am a good and faithful pastor. However, I am all too familiar with my own failings in both of these areas. And please do not think that I'm saying this fishing for compliments or some pat on the back or some attaboy. No, I'm not. I understand all too well the sentiment of King David, which is recorded in 1 Chronicles 21.8. And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing, but now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, 
for I have done very foolishly. David had been specifically told by God not to number the children of Israel. And yet this is exactly what he went out and did. He knew he shouldn't have done it. Did it anyway. He had knowledge of what God wanted him to avoid. And he didn't. It's just like David. Sometimes we know what it is we're to do or not to do and we just don't have the will to do it. We do not do the good nor do we refrain from the evil because of our lack of will to do so. And there is one very important point that I want us to understand from the gospel lesson for today which speaks to this. I cannot speak to the reasons why Jesus did what he did when he stayed in Jerusalem. That would be gross conjecture on my part. I mean, we do have his words that he was, quote, about his father's business. I really don't understand it. But that's right. There's lots of things I don't understand in the Bible. I accept them. I just don't understand them fully. However, I can understand the ultimate result which this episode had in his life. And we find this result recorded in Luke 2, 51 and 52. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Jesus put aside his own reasons for doing what he had done by remaining in Jerusalem. And chose to be obedient to the wishes of his father and mother. And we can certainly see that this obedience is a foreshadowing, if you will, of the obedience which Christ will have when he obeys the will of the Father and goes to the cross of Calvary. Willingly, he bends his human will to the will of the Father. Yes, I know that he is God. Yes, I know this is why he came. And yet it is exactly that same situation that we face. Do we bend our will to do the will of God? Or do we not bend it and do our own will? Obedience has as its natural outgrowth an increase of wisdom and in our standing with our fellow man. It also has the same natural outgrowth in our standing with God. It is as we are obedient to the will of God that we grow in wisdom and our standing with God. And please remember this is not some kind of works righteousness idea for it is not. We should know that we cannot do anything that places God under any kind of restraint or obligation. However, at the same time, we also know that those who follow God are blessed by Him. Now, these are not always blessings that we can see. But they are, people are blessed just the same. Therefore, my friends... Let us seek to bend our will to His will so that we may obey Him. And of course this means that we will not always get our way and that we're going to force to be do things that we really don't want to do. As we were talking about this morning, what? I got to love Him? I got to forgive for what He did to me? I, I, no, I don't want to do that. Too bad. That's what we're called to do. It means changing our human will to the will of God. It means changing our love of man to the agape love of man. As Barbara so eloquently pointed out this morning, every level of love in the world gets something back for it. We love another human, they love us. But the agape love of God doesn't have or receive anything. It just loves. That's difficult for us to do. 
Actually, it's impossible for us to do without the grace of God. And that is what we're called to do. Bend our will, bend our love to the love of God. We cannot do it without Him. And He cannot do it without us willing our obedience to it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.